CJP 11680, Commonwealth v. Alex Ramos. Good morning, Mr. Chief Justice, your honors as well. May it please this honorable court. I am attorney Todd Pommel and I represent the defendant below, Alex Ramos, whose conviction for knowingly receiving a stolen motor vehicle cannot stand. There are three reasons why his conviction should be reversed by this honorable court. The first of which is of critical importance. Indeed, it is the pressing issue in this case. The motion court erred in denying Mr. Ramos's motion to suppress evidence where Lynn police officers entered a detached garage adjacent to his family dwelling whereby they found a stolen motor vehicle which was the heart of the prosecution in this case. Well, didn't they have probable cause to believe that there was criminal activity going on in that garage? It's a close question, Your Honor, but I believe based off the low jack signal, uh, the police go to the garage, the vicinity of 65 Gardner Street in Lynn, Massachusetts. They're investigating a stolen motor vehicle. And what brings the police to this location is there's a low jack signal that goes off in the cruiser of Officer Avery. Mm -hmm. Similarly, uh, I think it's Officer Hinton also has a low jack signal go off in his cruiser. The police drive toward uh, Gardner Street. The signal gets loudest in front of 65 Gardner Street. The police officers stop. And at this point, there's three uniformed armed police officers present at the location. Officer Avery approaches the garage knocks on the door, but before he knocks, he claims to have hear, to hear the sound of tools, such as wrenches, perhaps ratchets. Here's these tools with a chop floor. shop. I mean, That's this car's been stolen. The car's been stolen. It's probable cause to believe it's in this garage. The owner of the property, who I think was your client, has prior involvement in this kind of activity, which the police know. That's correct. Um, they go up to the garage and knock. They hear people using tools, and as soon as they announce police, there's a big scramble and everybody goes out the back or people run out the back door. Correct, there's a front bay door that the mm -hmm. police officer knocks on after, and announces his presence. There's a rear exit uh, doorway where the police see three people run out of the garage and they're in a backyard that's fenced and the fence is roughly six feet high. Officer the Avery probable cause the fence. to believe stolen car in the garage being disassembled as we speak Correct. What's the problem with going into the garage? When there's a distinction between probable cause to search versus probable cause to seize. And at that point in time, the officers may have had probable cause to seize the garage. And indeed, none of the exceptions to the warrant requirement, none of the exigencies, exigencies were present here. This case is remarkably similar to the Tyree case from 2010. Let's assume for a moment that nobody runs out the back door. They have probable cause to believe that a crime is ongoing in the garage right now. Right now, it's ongoing. What do they do? They call the police station. Can we get a warrant to stop this crime that's ongoing right now in this garage? Well, uh, well, can't, can't they just go in and say, stop destroying the car? No, they cannot. Because one, once the police knock on the door to inquire about what is going on in the garage, they hear tools drop. They and see people, people and, escape. And nobody comes to the door, obviously. They don't continue to hear any sounds that would suggest destruction of evidence, which is one point. One of the exigencies that would not apply in this case. There was four principal exigencies that were the Commonwealth failed to satisfy in the Tyree case. That was a case out of 2010, out of this court, in which then Justice Gantz was on the panel. There was, it was a five-member panel. Chief Justice Marshall wrote the decision. It was joined also by Justice Spina, joined by Your Honor, and also joined by Justice Botsford. And in the Tyree case, police enter into a residence, not a garage. They have six police officers. They go down in the basement looking for one of at least two suspects that were involved in an armed robbery. The police are armed with knowledge. People live here, who they are, the van they were driving. They bring the victim from the armed robbery to the location. He identifies the van as being similar to the van that was driven. They peer into the window and they see an item, which was a wrapping from the money that was stolen. I believe it was $500 with a wrapping around it that had the word uh, 500 on it. The police enter, they have their guns drawn and they stand in front of the basement door. They knock on the door. They hear a male voice inside. They go into the basement. They find the defendant, Tyree, hiding behind a bulkhead door. 
and arrest him. And this court said that that search and that seizure was unconstitutional. He had uh, cocaine paraphernalia in his shoes. There was a smell of burnt cocaine being smoked in the basement. And this court said that that search was illegal because there was no sufficient exigency that the Commonwealth could meet its heavy burden of proof on. All right, you got three people at least fleeing from this garage. Correct. Where the police believe a crime is ongoing. Right. So the, the, some of the police come over the fence and chase the three people to try to catch them. Correct. Um, don't the police have an obligation, if nothing else, to check to see if someone else is also in the garage? They would, only have, they would not have an obligation unless this court were to extend the warrant exigency requirement to adopt the accomplice sweep, which was an exception. Why, why is that true? Why, why is it that after, well, first of all, what happens here, as I understand it, is that two, they, they look over the fence, they see two people fleeing, and um, they uh, persuade those two to come over the fence, so they don't enter the property at that point. They enter the property when a neighbor is basically saying, oh, there's a third guy pointing out a third guy um, under the uh, porch. And uh, then they, uh, they go in. And um, the fact that the noise may have stopped, they have no idea how many people are, were in the, um, in the garage. And, <coughs> you know, it doesn't, have to, it doesn't take a lot of noise to uh, remove the low jack or to try to be getting the license plate off. How do they know? that stuff is not continuing to be destroyed. Well, there's a couple hidden. of points that I'd like to make about this very issue, Your Honor. One of which would be the exigency requirements to go into the uh, garage. The Commonwealth asserts in its brief that there's a sufficient exigency, that is destruction of evidence. And the cases dealing with destruction of evidence primarily deal with, not even with drug cases, for example, when the police enter, yeah, somebody runs to the bathroom the toilet, to flush drugs right. on the toilet, which could affect whether there's a trafficking indictment, for example, the weight of the evidence, it could affect whether somebody swallows the drugs. There are also cases where there's not a sufficient amount of uh, sufficient police presence to secure the premise. The motion, in the motion transcript, there was testimony that it would only take four officers to secure these premises. There were f at least seven or eight officers in addition to Officer Avery that were present. But that this wouldn't is, stop them from, you know, unless they knew what was going on in the garage, it couldn't stop the destruction. It, they would keep chopping. And you can, and it doesn't take much to hide um, uh, a license plate or, or other identifying information that might be on the vehicle. Well, the issue I think is different, Your Honor, is this is a detached garage. It's got four walls. It's surrounded by at least eight police officers before the Officer Avery entries, enters the garage. Destruction of evidence. This is a motor vehicle. It can't escape because of the police Car presence. Car can't, but pieces of it can. Well, th they would still support a prosecution for having an, uh, a, a legal stolen motor vehicle in the garage. Whether the evidence could have been destroyed further, I think would bear on the facts of the case. If the police officers heard more evidence suggesting a destruction, maybe at that point in time there would be a sufficient exigency to justify going into the garage. But at this point in time, you have eight, if not nine police officers that are armed. They're on location. They have a garage. They've, a paint, they've uh, grabbed three people and put them in handcuffs. They have no information from any of those three suspects that there's anyone else in the garage. The police then go get a warrant to search the house where Mr. Ramos is arrested that is adjacent to this garage. The evidence can't, I think there's no facts in this case supporting that the evidence was being further destroyed. There's no evidence that would support flight of suspects anymore. They have three suspects. And in, in order to go in the garage, I think you would need to adopt the They have no idea how many suite. people were in the garage. Three fled, but they have no idea how many people are in there. That They're is supposed correct. to just not pay any attention to that. Maybe there's no one else in there. What should have happened in this circumstance, Your Honor, respectfully, is that the premises should have been secured, and when they went and got a search warrant that evening, the police got a search warrant for the then house, they, they should have seen. Then they look to see if anyone else is in the, at the crime scene? That's at the crime scene. We're not talking about some distance look at, we're talking at the crime scene. Well, you have the, you have the house, you have the garage, and you have the cartilage. We're talking the, the garage cartilage. now. We got a, they got a search warrant for the house. We're talking the garage, the scene of the crime. They should have similarly got a warrant to enter the garage because no exigency justified that search. If there was no additional evidence to suggest destruction of the evidence, the tools, there was no more What about danger tools to the Ryan? police? If there's another person in that Correct. garage, there are tools in that garage, what about danger to the police? How do they know? Interestingly, Your Honor, there was no evidence proffered by the Commonwealth at the suppression hearing that the police officers had any danger. Unlike Tyree, in Tyree, this court held that there wasn't a sufficient danger for the police that entered the basement. This is police officers that had guns drawn prior to entering the basement that were investigating an armed robbery where two people, while masked, 
armed a local convenience store. And this court held that that exigency was not met based on those facts at that suppression hearing. In this suppression hearing, the Commonwealth offered no evidence at all that there was any danger. There was no evidence that guns were drawn, that the police officers well, knew of these numbers they to be armed they don't dangerous. Know. They, all they know is a, a bunch of people are in there with assumedly prior criminal records disassembling a motor vehicle. They don't, they don't know how dangerous they might be. How are they supposed to know if they have guns or not? But they're there. Well, they should testify at the suppression hearing that they had some type of safety concern. The court did not find that there was any safety concern. The Commonwealth offered zero evidence whatsoever in support of a safety concern. And to allow a search would just delve into the accomplice sweep exception. The accomplice sweep exception was first mentioned by the Dubois case from the appeals court in 1998. And in that case is a footnote, footnote number four, that mentions the so-called accomplice sweep exception. It says it has some considerable appeal so long as there are reasonable limits. Well, there, there wouldn't Isn't be any reason. Doesn't, doesn't this case exactly raise that point? Respectfully, it Reasonable does not. appeal, limits? Respectfully, it does not, Your Honor, and here's why. Because there is no evidence in this case to even suggest that members, people may have been in the garage, that they may have been armed and dangerous. When you look to the accomplice sweep exception case law, it is essentially an extension of the Maryland versus Bui case from the United States Supreme Court. And in that case, the court held that where the police officers are in a place where they're lawfully able to be, and they've arrested somebody, as a search incident to that arrest, the standard of reasonable suspicion would apply so long as the two prongs are met, that the police have reason to believe that their safety concerns are implicated or that members of the public's safety may be implicated and that there may be an armed and dangerous person. Let's, let's say that they knocked on the door, police are here, there's all of a sudden the sound stops, nobody runs out the back door. Police have reason to believe a crime is being committed in the garage, no one runs out the back door. They can't open the door and say, you're under arrest? Isn't that a reasonable, that's what's happened here. They look in the door to see if any, look in the door after the three people run out to see if there's anyone else in there to arrest. Well, what would be different on those facts, Your Honor, is here you have a knock on the door and you hear tools drop, whereas in that hypothetical, there's a knocking on the door and nobody answers. So there's no suggestion that there's even a person in the garage. And in those circumstances, the police would have to go get a warrant. They would have a low jack signal and they would have to apply for a search warrant based on probable cause within the four corners of the warrant. You're saying in that example, um, they knock on the door, they've heard the sounds, the sounds stop, nobody comes to the door, they can't go in? I believe that the hypothetical, there, wouldn't, there weren't the sounds of the tools. Well, well let's just assume yeah, no, that there is. No, sounds of the tools, and then they stop when, as soon as right. they announce the police are there. Well, nobody's coming out of the garage. The difference here is when three people exit the garage and the police obtain those three suspects, and, and there's no evidence. See, some of the cases cited in the accomplice sweep exception is a good. Uh, uh, Did you brief the accomplice sweep exception, by the way? The accomplice sweep exception was briefed. It was in my brief. It's about two pages long. It's, there's about a paragraph in the uh, Grasso and McAvoy treatise, and there's a handful of pages in the Lefebvre search and seizure treatise. And the court uh, kind of throws it in as an afterthought. And, and even in the Commonwealth's brief, the Commonwealth doesn't seem to be relying on the accomplice sweep exception. It seems to be suggesting that the court may have made a mistake in relying on it, but it wasn't necessary to reach the result of allowing for a, uh, a denial of the motion to suppress evidence in this case. But all the cases cited in the accomplice sweep Discussing the accomplice sweep exception, you really have the footnote four from Dubois that cross references the Lefebvre treatise. The Lefebvre treatise has about 20 pages of analysis of all the cases throughout the country. And what's unique about the accomplice sweep, it's never been adopted by this court, it's never been adopted by the appeals court, and to date, the United States Supreme Court has never adopted this exception. But do you, do you need it though? I mean, on Justice Cordy's example of um, you hear sounds. Um, the sounds stop after you knock on the door, it says Lynn police, no one emerges. Can you not go in under exigent circumstances of a crime in the process of being committed? I think in that circumstance you could, but this circumstance is different because there's because no- Because they, they saw two and a neighbor pointed out the third. And that's how do correct. they know there's not a fourth? Well, that's one of the problems I think raised by the accomplice sweep exception in the Lefebvre treatise it can go two different ways. The argument can always be, well, we have three, but there could be four. We have five, but there could be six. And there's case law discussed in that treatise that suggests that, that those types of uh, searches and seizures are valid because the police may not know how many people are involved. Conversely, there's cases that suggest because the police do not have reasonable suspicion to know how many people may be involved or whether there is an accomplice, the search is similarly illegal. 
The people it seems who like the were outside were under arrest. Those who had been seen leaving the garage, they were under arrest. Is that right? They were basically two were asked to jump over the fence because at that point the police weren't able to access the backyard. Okay, but then when they, they accessed the backyard, they arrested a third person who was hiding under okay. trash bags. So if if those three people are under arrest, under that situation, they still wouldn't be able to go in and effect an arrest of whoever is inside in the same way that they've arrested the, the three who've come out. Well, that's because the police have no reasonable basis to believe that anyone else is in the garage. They don't hear any further sounds. They don't know if there are any well, other it's, accomplices. It's not likely that they're going to continue to pick apart the car if, if the police have announced themselves. Correct, but the garage is surrounded by eight or nine police officers. They don't hear any further sounds. If there was a, a possibility of escape, that would be thwarted by the police presence. The police were able to get a warrant, so there was no impracticality of obtaining a warrant. They obtained a warrant in this very case so for the house. So they couldn't go in to arrest anybody else who might be there, even though they've arrested the three who've come out until they get a warrant. Correct, unless, unless this court, unless Maryland versus Bowie was followed, which was not in this case, because there was no evidence suggesting risk of safety to the public or to the officers. The record is devoid of that evidence at the suppression hearing. And further, the only justification would be the accomplice sweep, which even if this court adopted the accomplice sweep, following the reasonable suspicion analysis mentioned in the Lefebvre treatise, there is no reasonable suspicion that there are other accomplices present in this case. <coughs> For those reasons, as well as the other two reasons in my brief, I would respectfully urge this honorable court to vacate Mr. Ramos's conviction. And I thank you all for your time. Thank you, counsel. Good morning, and may it please the court, Quentin Wells for the Commonwealth. Um, as a few of your honors mentioned earlier, uh, there, uh, there was indeed in this case um, su sufficient exigency accompanying the ample probable cause that the officers had due to uh, the low jack signal, um, the noises they heard when they uh, put their ear to the garage essentially, um, and then the sounds of flight that they subsequently heard um, after doing so. Um, and now you, you argued exigency of escape <coughs> and exigency of uh, destruction of evidence. Uh, is there any crime in crime being committed exception that you can enter a house because a crime is in the process of being committed? Or are you going there? I, I'm not, Your Honor, in, in terms of, and I assume you're referring to the fact that they would be stopping these individuals from dismantling the car if they indeed were in the process of doing so. That seems very reasonable to me. Uh, I did not rely on such an exception in my brief because I believe the other two were so strong. Now, is there an exception? I mean, do we have an exception for the commission of the crime that you can enter a house to stop the commission of a crime? I think it's usually grounded in, in safety um, in, in terms of um, or, or exigent. protecting someone. It, yes, Justice Botsford, I, I think the uh, it's only a car, of course, that would be being harmed in, in this case. I think it, it strikes me as reasonable to interrupt such, such actions when you have such probable cause that it's happening. Um, but t to my knowledge, usually it's related to um, when there's actual physical risk of, of harm to someone. So are you Could have been a Monet painting. Could have been a Monet painting. Could sure. have been the proceeds of some art Absolutely. theft. Are you saying that the exigency uh, in part is as to the continuing destruction of evidence? I, I am, Justice Lank. And so that's different from this crime being committed uh, notion. It is. And um, I, I do agree that in terms of the destruction of evidence ex exigency, it's usually drugs. It's usually uh, something that officers fear is going to be flushed down the toilet. Um, maybe. Uh, <coughs> That's really uh, usually what it is. It, it, but although cases have held that it is not uh, that exception, it's not limited to um, easily destructible or effervescent evidence. It can be any evidence that's that's uh, at risk of being destroyed. Um, and in this case, it was audibly being destroyed uh, when the officers arrived. And what was it about what about the if the fact that the noise stopped and they didn't hear anything else going on that would suggest further destruction? Yes, uh, and I believe this was alluded to um, when my brother was speaking. Uh, 
simply because the officer could no longer hear the sounds of the NASCAR pit crew, as he referred to them at the motion to suppress, doesn't necessarily mean that the evidence had, had stopped uh, being destroyed. My argument is that even if the officers did believe that the destruction had stopped at that point, they could still enter the garage. But there's really, uh, there are, there are um, parts of a car, elements of a car that can be destroyed noiselessly, say uh, a VIN number or a license plate or these sort of, um, th the officers in hearing what they heard earlier would, would be reasonably justified in believing that uh, such further destruction was going on that was silent, that was not uh, happening as a result of these power tools being used. In, in terms of the exigency of escape, which you mentioned, but if you've got eight officers around the garage, doesn't that answer that particular factor? In other words, if somebody tries to escape, they're gonna be dead, they're here. So uh, just the first thing I'd say to that is that there was uh, different evidence presented at the motion to suppress in terms of how many officers there were. The judge ultimately concluded, I believe, that there were three or four officers when they entered the yard. Um, I think ultimately se several more arrived on scene, but he found, based on what he heard from, from all of the officers and several testified at the hearing, that there were really only three or four at the time that and the- when they entered the garage? When they entered the yard, yeah, I believe he found, I, I'm almost positive of this, I believe that he found it was three or four when he, they entered the garage as well. I, I think that it was in fairly quick succession. Um, the, the first two suspects came over the fence and were detained. The third was pointed out by the neighbor. The officers entered, found him hiding under the bags. Um, at that point, Officer Avery walked uh, into the garage. Um, but the, the other thing I would say to that, uh, Your Honor, is in Commonwealth versus Tyree, which is a case that um, my brother relies pretty heavily on. Um, and in that case, they found the destructions of, of evidence exigency was not present, nor was the risk of flight exigency. And the risk of flight ex exigency was not found, in part because the guys inside didn't know the officers were there yet. Uh, they, they were sort of had believed they had gotten away with it at that point. The officers had learned of it from an independent source and domestic investigation. They had officers posted at, I think, two doors of the apartment building. Um, sort of implying that it would be very hard um, for everyone to stream out, avoiding the officers that were cordoning off the, the, co the condo, I think, in that case. In this case, I think it's somewhat different in that there's this six foot tall um, fence all, all around the yard that the officers can't easily see through. And it's, I think, a tall order to expect them to sort of cover the, the I'm speaking just now with the risk of flight exception, uh, cover that perimeter uh, while there are these guys sort of fleeing, all um, already demonstrating that they're going to flee and hide out of sight of the officers. It's um, very distinguishable from Tyree, I would say. Was there a fourth person found, by the way, the one in the house? So this did not come out at the motion to suppress Justice Corey. This came out at trial that the defendant, in fact, had made it into the into house and, and closed the door behind him, um, thus leaving the uh, other individuals in the yard without anywhere really to go. And he was discovered uh, in, in furtherance of the search that the search warrant just are, was obtained for the house, right? Yes, that's right. Now, you know, I'm just a little puzzled reading the judge's findings. How did it actually work? Uh, the police hopped the fence, the stockade fence, in order to, uh, they, they persuaded the two uh, gentlemen to whom they had seen to come over the fence. And they arrested them, they cuffed them, and so forth. And then the two police officers went over the fence themselves and um, after being signaled by the neighbor that the third, the Mr. Santiago was hiding under the uh, porch? That's my understanding, yes, Justice Lank. And at, at some point, one of the officers had seen three individuals running through the yard. Uh, one of them, I forget which officer, but when they first looked over the fence after hearing the noises, they saw three people run out of the back of the garage mm -hmm. across the yard towards the house. They ran around the side to sort of catch up with those individuals. And at that time, they, uh, they could only see two. Uh, those two were ordered out and were detained. There was one more at that point still missing. Shortly after that, the neighbor pointed out the, the suspect in the yard. And yes, at, at that point, they entered, entered the yard and climbed over. That's my understanding of the sequence. Okay. Um, what exactly is the accomplice sweep exception? It's, uh, it's the... Um, Case law on the exception is, is pretty scant, uh, Justice Gantz. Uh, and it, it is 
Commonwealth versus Du Bois, which is a, a, a case from the appeals court from the 90s, um, describes what it would be. And that's, um, it's very similar to the protective sweep. It's sort of a corollary or, or parallel to the protective sweep. Uh, the difference being, uh, if officers believe that they're, if, if, they're in a, if they're somewhere pursuant to a valid arrest, and they, they believe that that arrestee has accomplices that might be in that space, even in the absence of safety concerns, that those accomplices might be dangerous, the officers are warranted in making a limited additional intrusion, I believe is the language he uses, Justice Pointer used, uh, to just see if those accomplices are present. And the exception was not found. Right, in, but I'm sorry, but for a protective suite, they're already inside. Yes, sir. So you have to worry who's going to come out of a different room. So I understand it with regard to a protective sweep, since yes. you'd like to know whether or not you're alone in the house or whether there's somebody else. But this is with regard to entering a, a building. Um, my, my understanding, Your Honor, is that the accomplice sweep would, would uh, the exception would be employed at the same time uh, during the events of an arrest as the protective sweep would be employed. Let me clar clarify that. I do not believe it's relegated to entering a, a building. I, I think that it describes um, going into the adjacent spaces that might be uh, entered for so the it, purposes of a protective sweep. So it speaks suite. of the scope of what you can do once you're already inside, but it doesn't justify your going inside in the first place. So the case Guevara from California that really sort of is the one most cited, I think, by, by any uh, court discussing the protective sweep, happens to involve an individual arrested, I think, on their porch or just outside their house. Um, but there was lots of evidence of other accomplices in that person's scheme. <coughs> the judge, the motion judge, did not believe that the officers feared for their safety, but believed that the evidence uh, of accomplices was so strong that the officer, it just, it was within uh, his, his powers to just sort of look in the house to see if all those other people he reasonably suspected were there, did not have probable cause to believe were there, w were there. Um, Do you rely on it at all? Does the Commonwealth rely on the accomplice sweep exception? In this case, I don't believe we need to based on the strength of the other uh, grounds for the search. Uh, in this case, I agree with something that was said when my brother was speaking, which is that this is a very close to the exact situation where such an exception would be found in the absence of any other exception. I believe there, as I said, that there are several others. But the reason I, I think that in this case it's particularly applicable is that it's not a crime of, of violence. Um, it's not, the suspects weren't necessarily armed uh, d during, the, uh, during the arrest, uh, but they did, had strong reason to believe that Mr. Ramos, the defendant in this case, was still present on the property uh, because he had not been Officer Avery, when he entered the garage, uh, knew that Mr. Ramos had not been located, knew that he uh, lived at that property and had several priors for um, stealing, uh, receiving stolen motor vehicles. Um, so, so that justifies the, immin the imminent, uh, the, the exigent uh, circumstance because they would have had reason to, to, to believe that Ramos would have been in the garage? Or is that, does that go to the accomplice sweep or does that go to the exigent circumstances argument? I think it goes to both. It certainly goes to the exigent circumstances argument in, in terms of risk of flight because they, they really would be justified in believing that Ramos was still in the garage because one of the other guys had hid under this pile of bags. What I was attempting to do is to isolate the accomplice sweep exception and, and look at it um, and see if that exception is outlined in Du Bois and in Justice Grasso and Justice Mac McAvoy's treatise um, would, it, would apply here. And, and but, the big but, but, question- but it, but it sounds as if you're basically moving away from the accomplice sweep exception and speaking of the, the exigency of risk of escape as your key focus. I, I was just in response to this last uh, question though, but, but if I was to isolate the accomplice sweep exception, I wouldn't consider risk of escape. It would just be the, the likely presence of accomplices in at the scene space. of the, at the scene of the crime, at the scene of the literally crime. at the yes. scene of the crime, not some in somebody else else's house someplace. Yes, at the scene, and and your honors, um, the reason why it's so infrequently 
comes up and so infrequently considered by any court is that the presence of accomplices to the crime is usually enough, um, arguably always enough, to uh, justify a fear of officer safety and to justify a, a protective sweep. It's very rare that those- Once you're inside. Once you're inside. Uh, right, yes, but the question right. is how do you get inside? I mean, it's well, would not ju you would not, be an officer who is outside would not have to fear for his safety unless there was a risk that they're going to be escaping and seeking to harm them in, in trying to escape. Yes, Justice Gant, I'm sorry, I should clarify. I suppose that the, the valid arrest that I would argue happens is, is when they arrest the third guy under the bags. They're in the yard at that point, uh, pursuant to a valid arrest. Um, so, so that's, the accomplice sweep didn't get them into the yard. Uh, I think it's easier to think of it um, as, as sort of starting then, uh, when they've made that valid arrest in the yard, to look for accomplices to the person they've just arrested. Um, so so, so if, 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 if the police are investigating a, uh, a, a group that's stealing articles of clothing out of a store, and one person uh, gets caught in the store, and the police officers say, where's the rest of the stuff? And he says, it's in my house. Um, and, uh, and, and he says, the others are there. Does the accomplice sweep allow the police to go to the, the, the arrested defendant's house and enter? I think that that would not qualify as a limited additional intrusion uh, as contemplated by the courts that have discussed the, the accomplice sweep. I think that, that in, in that scenario, um, they're arresting the guy somewhere else in your yeah. hypothetical, I believe. Yeah. And, and it's really, it, it, the courts have held that a protective sweep is not warranted when uh, there's sort of that scene change where um, officers maybe leave with the arrestee and go back in. Or it's really a pretty immediate um, action by officers. Okay, and notwithstanding the fact that, th that the other people are at the house where the, the, the other stolen property is being uh, kept. And well, it, it, there might be a destruction of exigency uh, argument th there. Uh, sorry, destruction of evidence argument there. But... Uh, I would say yes, it's distinct. That situation is, is not contemplated by the various authorities that have discussed the accomplice sweep. And I would, just, I would just close by saying that's the difference between the accomplice sweep and, and the protective sweep. The pre protective sweep requires um, some, safe, some articulated safety concern at a motion to suppress. The accomplice sweep is if there, there's strong reason to believe that accomplices to the crime the arrestee has committed are, are present in that space. And you don't yeah. rely on that in any event in this case? I do not. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. We'll take our morning break. All rise.